Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV. You're here with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. I hope you're having an absolutely awesome week wherever you are in this world of ours. We have to kick the show off with, I'd like everybody to sort of stop for a, a split second and, and, and really think about the people that are going through the fires over in Greece at the moment. It's really, really difficult. It must be heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching for them. You know, so many people are losing their lives and their homes and things that are very important to us. I... I grew up in a bushfire area here in Australia, so I do understand the loss and the tragedy and the fear that goes through people's minds as these fires are approaching. It's a very, very scary concept. So let's just sort of send our best wishes and our, our hearts go out to them and our prayers to everybody that's involved in this or has somebody that might be involved in it. Let's hope they all stay safe. So kicking the show off today, we're going to start with the Simply Tarot card of the week. And this week I'm starting up the show off with the Temperance card. Now, the temperance card is an ambiguous sort of card because a lot of people look at it and they say, here's the person sort of shifting water from one one cup to another, sort of, you know, tossing it backwards and forwards. Why would we have that on a, on a card where we're going to talk about money restrictions? Well, it is the card of money restrictions. It's also the card of, if you look closely, you can see that they've got their toes stuck in the water, of testing the water. Now, sometimes when we have money restrictions or changes in money in our lives, we are said to be sort of, you know, holding back our finances. It's not so much that we have a lack of them, but we're restricting the use of using those funds or allocating those funds to a new project because we need to test the water. We need to look at things. We need to look at where our money would be going and is this the right proposition for us? So if you are experiencing some money restrictions at the moment or you're in a contemplation phase, where you are actually trying to think of whether or not this is the right decision for you, what the card is suggesting for you is to stick your toe in the water and have a good look around. Don't make a final decision just yet. I think it's time now that we need to be able to focus on what our instincts are trying to tell us. Now, look, I've had so many emails this week about people sort of asking me, what does it mean, Amanda, with all these planets going retrograde? Now, a very, very quick crash course in astrology, when a planet is said to be going retrograde or backwards, it doesn't mean that it loses its energy. It doesn't mean that it completely changes. What it means is it handles the situation maybe in a different way. Now, if I could explain it to you like this, if I was to stand you upside down on your head for a few minutes and then turn you back up upright, what would happen? You would feel lightheaded. You would feel dizzy. But I haven't changed your basic personality, have I not? I've just changed how you can think about something or go about a project or handle the next step in your life for, for that couple of seconds or that minute or two while you regain your composure. Well, that's what it's like when a planet goes retrograde. It's sort of almost, it hasn't lost its energy. It's just regrouping or it's regathering or sort of refocusing its energy and its direction for however long the retrograde goes for. When we talk about Mercury retrograde, which our darling friend Mercury goes retrograde three times a year for approximately about three weeks at a time, we all sort of go into this panic, shock, horror. Oh, Mercury's going retrograde again. It's almost like it's time to slash my wrists and end my life. Well, it's not that bad. Mercury will be going retrograde again this week on the 26th of July through to the 14th of August. So Mercury retrograde is we don't post anything. If you're going to put something in the mail, be prepared. It might get lost. This is the time when we have technical issues. Um, be aware Skype are doing a, an upgrade now and everybody's going to have issues with that probably as it all sorts itself out and levels itself out. So there's going to be sort of, you know, smartphone issues, computer issues, people not having their listening ears off. That's Mercury. We haven't even gone into that yet. And I've seen so many posts on social media where everybody's thought we've been in Mercury retrograde for most of this year. We haven't. This is our second Mercury retrograde. But we do have four other planets and one other, I don't even know that we class Chiron as a planet. Chiron's only something that, modern astrologers are starting to work with but Chiron's actually retrograde at the moment but Chiron spends a lot of time retrograde and so do planets like Pluto, Neptune, they spend a lot of their time retrograde as well so the fact that we have five planets retrograde, we have Saturn, the planet of discipline, we have Pluto, the power of transformation, we have Mars, the planet of action, we have Neptune, the planet of illusion and delusion, we have Chiron, which considered in a chart is the wounded healer where we look for karmically where we need to heal ourselves. And then this week, later this week, we've got Mercury joining the throng. 
Well, it, it, it is a time of where we're just being asked to slow down. We're not being asked to make any major decisions that we don't have to make. It's a time to sort of reorganise our lives, to sort of slow down, contemplate where your life's going, look at the things that you might need to change or bring about changes in your life, look at what's important to you. And I feel that 2018 has been about that anyway. A lot of people have been reorganising what is important to them, what is their value systems, where are they going? Do they need to make adjustments to the way that they live their life? And that can be something as simple as starting up recycling in your home that you've never done before. It can be re-looking re at your finances. It can be looking at the way you discipline your children and the beliefs that you hope that they would carry on into their adult life. It comes in many different forms. I think it's a major period of adjustment as the world has gone through a lot of changes and we've had lots of tragedies and every time you turn the news on, it's actually quite depressing. There's another tragedy affecting some family somewhere in the world. And, you know, we seem to be losing a lot of our, our, our musical idols and things like that. And I suppose that's just part of life. We get to a certain age and things start to really change. And it's, you know, as we mature, when we're in our early 20s, I think we think we're indestructible and nothing's ever going to affect us. But as we go through the journey of life being here on Earth, we do find that there is things that we do have to contend with and have to deal with. And this is all part of the evolution of us all evolving and changing. So I don't want you to get too bogged down in these five planets that are retrograde at the moment, if you count Chiron. But, you know, and with Mercury heading that way this weekend, I'd be more inclined to be concerned about Mercury retrograde, just making sure that, you know, you've got your listening ears on, that you read anything thoroughly before you sign it, and make sure that, you know, all your electronic devices and everything like that, all the upgrades are there and everything's being done and don't leave it behind in the cafe, I suppose, is the best word of advice there. So we're going to also be working with this week, we've got on the 28th of this month, we've got the full moon in Aquarius. Now, yes, we have a full moon once a month. Every 28 days we have a full moon. And each month I sort of talk to you about it's the time of release and letting go of things. With the full moon in Aquarius, this is one of these rather uncomfortable sort of full moons because the Aquarian energy likes to be a sort of aloof, likes to be sort of known as emotionally detached, nothing bothers me, nothing worries me, and nothing could be further from the truth because anybody that has the moon in Aquarius knows that's the, that's the message that you project to the outside world. But underneath that, you've got a marshmallow tummy where things do really sort of affect you almost like having the sun sign in cancer, you're very sensitive, you're very emotional, you just don't let people see it in the outward world. So the moon in Aquarius is sort of going to be a seesaw between I don't give a, a toss about what's going on in my life and how it affects you or me or anybody else to sort of going into these waves of uncontrollable sort of panic almost where, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, my life isn't the way I want it to be, I feel as if, you know, nothing's going right for me. And what I'm, you know, and I'm doing everything right. And why am I being rewarded or punished in this way? It's not that you're being rewarded or punished for anything. It's just about learning to get in touch with your emotions and your feelings, and learning to work with them instead of seeing them as a, as the enemy. Work with them. Work with the energy. Don't look at it on a negative level. So if we were going to burn a candle, we'd be obviously going to be burning a a full moon candle. So the full moon candle would be write down three things that you're going to release. Something that you're ready to release right now hopefully three things that you're ready to release right now i know i've been working on my list because i've been off work periodically over the last couple of weeks with laryngitis i've had plenty of time to think and watch the telly and catch up on all my dvds that i hadn't had time to watch but i've also sort of realized it's a time of letting go of some issues in my life that no longer serve me anymore so i've got quite an extensive list for this full moon where i've been adding to it over the last month of the things that I can now happily release out of my emotional well-being, things that I've even been hanging on to for a lot of years that I thought I'd released have come back into my mind recently. So you may have found that also. So if you're going to burn a full moon candle, there's two wicks in the candle. I like to use burn one wick one day and one wick the next day so that that way then you get a longer burn time. But also because the two wicks I find makes the glass container become very hot and quite often they can crack when you have a change in temperature. We've been known in the last week or so here, you know, one minute it's warm and the next minute it's freezing cold and the temperature can drop by 10 or 12 degrees in a matter of minutes. You never burn a candle 
on a, a table or a an ob, you know, putting it on a piece of furniture. I always put it on a coaster first. Write your list, put that underneath the candle, put your candle on a coaster. The glass container, as I said, does get hot, but the actual candle wax, the soy wax, doesn't get hot. Also, because it's the new moon, uh, the full moon in Aquarius, I would also be burning my Aquarian or air sign candle as well, writing an identical list for that. You need to burn your candle between five minutes, five to ten minutes a day, up to two hours. So depending, as long as you can sit with the candle, I don't suggest that you leave a candle unattended. Certainly never under curtains, under open windows, air conditioners, near children and dogs and cats, because, you know, accidents do happen. So you will get out of your extra large candles, you will get about a 60-hour burn time. If you burn the alternate wicks, you'll get up to about 100 hours. For those of you that want a more compact set, we do have our travel kit. And this one, this week I've made up is the two full moon candles in either side. And in the middle, we have the air sign candle. But you can choose any three candles you like to go into your travel gift box here of candles. These you will get about 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, 15 hours out of them. And they only have one wick. The same rules apply. Always place your, your list underneath and put it on a coaster. But they're perfect for the office or if you're travelling. For those of you that don't want to burn a candle, these are wax warmers. You can pick these up at your supermarket or local um, department store. Here in Australia, just under the $20 mark for one of these. These are electric. You just put some of the wax out of your candle in there. You don't need a flame. Again, same sort of concept. Put your coaster underneath, write your list. You can put your melt warmer on and you can leave it on all day. These are perfect to use in the office or at home or anywhere that you don't want to flame. I probably use my melt warmer more than I actually burn a candle these days because it is something I can leave going. So that's just our, our full moon situation for the week. So we're going to quickly have a look at our famous singer for the week. And this week we're up to the male sign of Virgo. And I was only saying to a couple of people this morning when I was busy getting ready for the show, I seem to be bringing up singers all the time that have left us, that people that have left such a mark in history, but a lot of them left us way too soon. And again, this week it is somebody that has left us, and it's Michael Jackson. Now, look, I don't think there's a person on the planet that doesn't know Michael Jackson. I mean, he was just an amazing, amazing entertainer. I mean, he changed the world of music, I believe, for the better. He was such a perfectionist. He is a Virgo, and that is where we get our his perfection from. With him being a Virgo, he was ready to be able to sort of take the world by storm. Nothing short of perfection was good enough for Michael Jackson, and a lot of people said that was his undoing, that that was what caused his death because he had driven his body to such degrees with his dance moves and things like that that he was in such chronic pain that he needed such strong painkillers to be able to maintain and put on the performance of a lifetime every particular show that he did. But I think there's other areas of Michael Jackson's life that other people don't realise. He was a great humanitarian. He was in the Guinness Book of World Records for being involved in the most charities around the world connected to humanitarian issues. And this just shows the calibre of the man. I mean, not only was he a great singer, a great songwriter, a great musician, his music clips were just absolutely phenomenal. I don't know that we'll ever see the likes of that type of talent again. And just a man that could do anything that he put his mind to. There's too many awards to mention that he has around the world, you know, biggest selling albums, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, and the list just went on and on and on and on and on. We would have but needed an hour show just to sort of touch the tip of the iceberg of his, <coughs> pardon me, his awards that he got in his life. So for those of you that want to sort of do the moonwalk to Thriller, well, today's the day because I think we should celebrate and tip our hat to Michael Jackson, the amazing entertainer that he is. And I'm saying is because in my mind, I don't think he'll ever really die. His physical body may have left the world, but I think his dance moves and his music will live on forever. He's a perennial. So we're going to take our very, very first call up in a moment when I work out how to work this new system with Skype that we've got. And I know we're going to Melbourne. My producer might be able to put it up on the screen. Joanna in Melbourne. Okay, Joanna, we're ready to take your call, sweetie. How can I help you? Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, sweetie. I was just, 
I was just wondering if you're able to connect with my dad. Not, He's I can't guarantee past. that in a very short space of time, Joanna. What I can suggest to you is do you have a direct question for me that I can answer for you? And if your dad wants to come through, he will. Yep. Well, so Lori, my best friend, be all right. Your life? Pardon? Well, Lori, my best friend, be all right. Okay. Lori's her own worst enemy. I feel yep. that there's areas there of Lori's life that I think that she's ignoring that really need to be sort of sorted out or fixed up. So there's areas there that I think Lori needs to do herself. So I think as far as will she be all right, yes, I do believe she's going to be all right, but I think the next couple of months are going to be incredibly difficult. Yep. Was your father a man that you would describe as being extremely well-mannered? Yes. Like, I, I've got a gentleman here with me in spirit, and it's like he keeps taking his hat off as if he's, to me, that's a sign of an incredibly well-mannered gentleman. Yes, I've got goosebumps. Like, I'm tipping my hat. You know, like, I mean, he might not necessarily worn a hat, but that's how he's coming through to me as I'm, I'm tipping my hat as if, you know, I'm... I'm very well mannered. I'm um, and I'm very excited about something that that's going on in your life. That's all he's showing me. It's like he's he's giving you his blessing to something that you've just started. Um, I've mainly been looking after my children. I've got health issues with my eldest, so I'm doing my best right. down. Well. I would take that as why he's tipping his hat to you because to me that's sort of like I have immense respect for you and I'm I'm there and I, I'm, I'm helping you with what you're doing. But with your eldest, is that a boy? My eldest is a girl. Who's the boy? Liam. He's is that my your eldest second son and then I've got a younger son. Yeah, he's, he's, your dad's bringing up the eldest boy for some reason. Yep, I have to make a special appointment with him. Okay, because he's just sort of telling me that, you know, you don't need to worry, everything's going to be fine. And that's why I asked if your eldest was a boy, because he was just sort of showing me the boy was going to be fine. Um, and that's what he was showing me that, you know, so if you've got a specialist appointment for him, I feel that the answers are a, a lot faster there than what they are with your daughter. But I feel with your daughter, yeah. I think we're going to get some breakthroughs there by about September or October. I think you're certainly on the right track. So I don't think that you need to be so hard on yourself. There's nothing you could have done to have changed this from what he's showing me. It's it's just one of those things yep. that's out of your control, Mum. Yep. Your dad had a very gentle yep. energy to me. He, he, especially around you, he was always sort of so gentle. I think other people didn't see that, that softer, more gentle side as you did. Yep. And he's always with you. So don't ever think that he's left you. He hasn't left you. He's always there. And he tells yeah, me you need no, to I laugh. Feel... Yeah, he tells me you don't laugh Sorry, enough. Was... That you're not yeah. laughing enough. He wants to sort of see more joy in your life. <laughs> yep. Yep, that makes total sense. Yeah, but I feel that's coming. But, I mean, I just think, you know, if you're having a really struggly sort of day with the children or something that, you know, you don't know how to sort out, just ask for his help. Ask him to give you a sign. Ask him to help you. He's there to help. He just, yep. you know, he never leaves your side. I, I'm sure there's probably other brothers and sisters, but for, for the moment, he seems to be the most of his time is with you. Yep. Because he feels you, yep. you need his, his strength more than than everyone else in the family. At the moment, you're the one that needs the, the strength. Anyway, Joanna, I'm going to have to leave yep. it there. We're going to go to Kay now. Are you there, Kay? Hello, Kay. Hi. Hi, how can I help you tonight, sweetie? Uh, I just wanted to see what kind of reading I would get. Uh, well, I like to work with a direct question. If you have a question for me, Kay. Is there anybody around me, with me? At times Sweetie, I don't, I don't necessarily try and tap into the, 
to the other side in the very short space of time that we have do you have a direct question that relates to your life or something that you need to have answered um to know if my grandma is around me yeah but like i just explained to you i can't guarantee i can just you can't just dial up who you want do you have a question that i can answer for you in your life here and then that way if she wants to come through she will I don't necessarily have a direct telephone link to the other side. Oh, yeah. Is there something that you um, want to know? Do you, do you want to change your job? Are you looking for love? Are you planning on moving? Something along those lines. Well, if I will stay where I'm at for the rest of my life, my home. Uh, okay, look, the first thing that they're showing me is there's massive changes coming up around you. I think there's been three or four endings that to me have major connotation that have ha either happened this year or are about to happen. I feel that you're sort of almost avoiding trying to take responsibility for your life. That's what they're sort of showing me at the moment. They're showing me that you need to take the reins to your life with both hands, not just sort of say, I want change, I want things to be the way that I want them to be, but I'm not prepared to actively put in the, the effort or what's required to do so has there sort of also been quite a few tears around you in recent times quite a few what quite a few tears around you in recent times have you been crying a bit yeah, yeah off and on yeah because they're just showing me that this is a good release we need to release this emotion this is part of what i think is preventing you from sort of taking the reins to your life is that you haven't released all the old hurts and heartaches that need to be released now, which is important. How long ago did your grandma pass away? Uh, like 16 years ago. And, um, well, my mother is handicapped and my father, they're both in the home. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and that puts a major pressure on you? Yeah, a lot of worry. Mm -hmm. and yeah, but if I can be blunt, Kay, I think it's time now that you've got to look at, you've done as much as you can do for them. You know, you, you've helped and, and, and done as much as you can do for them. It's now time to do something for Kay. That's sort of the very strong message that's coming through from your grandmother that it's time now for you. Like, you know, leave leave the other things that have worried you and upset you so much to her. Like your mum and dad, there's nothing more that you can do for them. It's just now, a, you know, it's a matter of time for them. There's nothing that you can physically do, wave a magic wand that's going to make them better. It's, you know, it's just, it's life. Your grandmother was a very strong woman and she wants you to try and tap into her strength. She's sort of saying to you, her strength's there for you to use, but you seem to keep pushing it away. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, you know, that could be too that you just feel tired and worn out from everything that you've had to carry. And I think that's a fair enough call too, that, you know, you've had not just your own life, but you've sort of been carrying literally everybody in the family for a long time, have you not? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah, well, I think it's now time. Yeah, but I don't mean to sound harsh or cruel, but I think it's now time to sort of look at, well, okay, Mum and dad are in the best facility that they can be in. They're getting the best care that's possible for them so I can cross them off my list of people I have to be, you know, trying to make their lives better. I've done everything I can and start working your way through the list so that the only person's name on the list should be yours in the end so that you're the one that needs the attention now. You're the one that needs looking after. You need a bit of pampering for yourself. But your grandmother's with you all the time and she's just sort of, She's just very clear on you've got to stop trying to, to, to mother the world. It's time to mother you. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, sweetie, lovely to talk to you. We've just about come to the end of the show again. So next week on the show, of course, we'll have our Simply Tarot card of the week. We'll have our little glimpse around the universe. We'll also have our famous singer next week. We'll be looking for a female Virgo singer. So that'll be interesting. Who did I find that we can talk about next week? But I, I just really want to sort of reiterate about these five retrograde planets. Please don't get too bogged down in the energy of it all. It's time to sort of 
have a little bit of R and R, sit on the couch, watch a good film, take a nice walk in nature. Just do something kind for yourself and allow yourself as we head into these last few days of July, allow ourselves the time to rest and sort of have a little bit of downtime and get ready for the, you know, the final four months of the year. Everybody will start to feel a little bit more energised now as the sun has moved into Leo, so it's sort of starting to fire up and we're starting to sort of come out of our deep sleep or most of our hibernation of the Cancerian period of time. So we're ready to start roaring and exploring the world again. So, you know, it just be kind to each other. I think it's a time where we really need to sort of look at being a little bit more kind to ourselves. And like the previous message with for Kay was that, you know, we can all stop mothering the world. I think we've got to start with looking after ourselves first and foremost. And then if there's something left over, then you start to look at your immediate family and extended family and friends and whatever. But I think we all need to sort of start taking better care of ourselves first because we're no use to anybody. If we go down, we can't look after anyone else either. So I hope you have a great week and enjoy your Mercury retrograde as it starts on the 26th. And it's I know that I'm going to have fun with it. It's already started as I upgraded Skype today and all the settings were different and nothing's familiar to me. And I'm one of those people I don't like change unless I instigate it. So that's probably a lesson for all of us. So have a great week with your technologies and your Mercury retrograde and the other five planets that are retrograde. We'll do it all again next week. Bye for now.